Welcome, everybody, to the Ultimate Swimmer March Madness NCAA Recap Podcast. Along, I'm Josh Davis, along with my co-host, Noah Yanchulis, and we're really excited to recap each day's events from women's NC2As and Division II NC2As. So, Noah, why don't you kick us off with the latest action going on? Yeah, for sure. Well, this is absolutely the best time of the year for anybody that is a real swim nerd like we are. I mean, this is just like a gold mine. It's like Christmas every day for two weeks straight. Um, but I'll just let's start with uh, D two NCAA's. So women's women's D one NCAA's are going on in Greensboro, and then Division two NCAA's are going on in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. But today, after prelims at D two, there was some weather reports of tornadoes and crazy hailstorms. So they actually ended up postponing finals for tonight. So there was no finals tonight and they're going to swim finals tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow's events are going to be swum as a time final uh, tomorrow night. So a little bit crazy, kind of a crazy way to start the meet, especially considering last year the meet was canceled because of COVID. And now this year it's getting thrown off because of weather. So it seems like uh, D2 can't really catch a break. But uh, yeah, there were still some some really good swims uh, in prelims this morning. Drury and Queens always have the top swimmers in the country, and that showed again. Uh, just going through some of the some of the times, I'll go through the top seeds. Uh, women's two IM Lexi Baker one fifty nine one, Alex Kunert men's two hundred IM one forty five zero, women's fifty freestyle Danielle Malili. And she's from Queens, sorry. Alex Kuhnert's from Queens as well. And Lexi Baker's from Queens. So all the top seeds are from Queens thus far. And then in the men's 50 free, we have Carol Ostrowski from Drury, freshman. So right now, uh, Queens kind of has a, a stranglehold on some of those top spots, but Drury is, is right there in the mix as well. I think that it's going to be a really interesting battle all weekend. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with... Um, with the next couple of days, depending on the weather, because there's always a chance that, uh, you know, that something, something happens and they have to cancel the meet or, or postpone it further. So hopefully for all the swimmers are able to, able to stay positive and the weather's going to clear up over the next, uh, 12 hours or so before prelims tomorrow morning. Well, I guess it's going to be finals tomorrow morning. So, right. So they'll do finals in the morning and then normal lineup, the normal day two lineup tomorrow night. Yes. So two time finals in essence. Yep. Day one in the morning and day two at night. So very interesting, but I think kind of creative and effective to get back on track to finish the meet in four days. So uh, yeah, it should be really interesting to see what happens. And I think that's a creative solution to let everybody do all the races and kind of keep the meet on track. So hats off to the leaders of all that. Absolutely. I was kind yeah. of, my first thought was like, I, I, I was like, maybe they'll have, because I heard it was going to be postponed before I saw, saw the big posting about it. And I thought, are they going to like somehow wait until Sunday to run these finals or what's going to happen? But you're right. It is really creative and it's going to keep the meat moving as normal as possible. So what was Carol Ostrowski's time a few months ago in the 50 free? Do you remember? Didn't yeah, you know? he went, he was 19 back in in november and because jury swam at uh at smu at a, a mid-season meet and he was 19 0 so the fastest time in the country for division two by a long shot and and really one of the fastest times in the country period i mean he would have been i think he's 10th or 9th in the country overall including all the d1 schools so he can he can definitely hang with the the big dogs but it should be a good race uh, there's a queen, a freshman from Queens named Matej Dusa, and they both were 19-3 this morning, and so that'll that'll be a nice battle. But if, I mean, if he can go 19-0 again, I don't see any reason why anyone's going to be close to that. Yeah, Drury got three up in the men's 50 and two up in the men's IM, whereas Queens was two up in the IM and. Uh, two up in the 50. So, so yeah, it's going to be a great, great battle. Looks like jury might have a slight edge on the men's side and Queens might have a slight edge on the women's side. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, excited for D2 to get rolling tomorrow. Probably one of the more interesting days in D2 history with the two time finals tomorrow for day two. 
Yeah. I don't know if there's ever been a an instance like that. Or I mean, not that not that I would be able to remember at least. But no, and hopefully all the weird things in swimming and in sports gets all done for tw- <laughs> in the next <laughs> You know, this last 12 months and the next few months, and then we're completely done with, you know, corona and tornadoes forever. So we'll see. And ice storms. Yeah. But anyway. And we can, we'll be back to normal. Um, just a quick side note for anyone listening that's not familiar with the NCAA process or the the lingo. When we say two up or, or three up or two down, that basically means two up. Up means top eight, A final. Down means uh, top 16. So anywhere from ninth to 16th, just for anyone that's unaware. Yeah. Th- thank you, Noah. That's us swim nerds knew that. But <laughs> regular folks may not have known that it's all it's, that was our, that's our March madness lingo. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, women's NC two A's, um, had a nice little, little start with just the 800 free relay. Kind of nice to get that out of the way and get warmed up into the meat. And uh, nothing crazy fast, all pretty, you know, pretty close though. A lot of close races, but um, I mean, Virginia just, just had a wonderful relay and three or four seconds ahead of everybody else. And they've, they've established themselves as the lead. And surprisingly, Kentucky was second. And Stanford, yeah. which I think has won this relay for the last five years, is eighth. Mm hmm. Yeah, Stanford was, you know, I wouldn't say they were they were off. They just did. They just don't quite have the firepower that they've had the past because they won 2019, 2018, 2017 um, and probably would have had a good shot last year. But I mean, that that's when they had Katie and Simone and Leah Neal and uh, Ella Easton was on some of those relays. So, you know, they had just top the top, the cream of the crop. And uh, but yeah, Virginia looked looked good tonight. I mean, winning by, like you said, almost. Uh, three and a half almost four seconds really um but yeah i mean it, overall it was a relatively relatively slow final uh and they they ran it in a couple heats to space out um to go every other lane and so i guess that that kind of can take away from the the excitement and the adrenaline a little bit but I also think that, and I think we saw it a lot in some of these conference meets, that it kind of gives you open water. And in a, in a sense, you should be able to go faster with no one next to you if you if you like swimming on, on clean water and can do and kind of mentally trick yourself into racing, even though you're not right next to someone. Yes. Yeah. Technically, there is smoother water, but there's got to be an adrenaline mm-hmm. issue that's lacking too, because there's nobody in the stands. You're spread out. You know, you may not be next to the the seed the, the the relay of the other squad that you might be normally next to um yeah. so I, I i am wondering if it's if there's an adrenaline thing and and you know each night should build as you know the ladies get more warmed up into the meet and you know the team r- scores and the team race gets more heated so but uh but yeah Paige madden split 141 six that was by far the fastest split of the of the evening and yep. that gave virginia the cushion they needed and they just held on for the win after that Paige madden went second on that relay but uh riley Gaines from kentucky had a 142 the freshman from a&m chloe stepanek was 142 uh, a georgia sophomore zoe hartman was 142 they were both 142 89 and my favorite swimmer kelly pash from texas the sophomore she was 143 7 just a little off, three tenths off her one forty two seven from conference a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. but still put uh, Texas in a great position to get fourth place. So technically, they're seated fourth in the running right now as the team scores, and then that's without diving. That's just this relay. So yeah, it's a good good start to the meet for Virginia, and should be interesting to see the battle play out between Kentucky, California, Texas, and Georgia the rest of the meet. Yeah. And I want to, I want to give a, another, I want to give a shout out to Zoe Hartman. She's kind of got that Ian Finnerty thing going where she's Georgia's breaststroker, but she's able to go the fourth fastest split of the night with a one forty two eight. So way to go, Zoe. Yeah. Zoe's just an all around amazing swimmer from Colorado, uh, but just a, totally dominated the breaststrokes uh, when she was coming out of high school. And yeah, it's pretty impressive for a breaststroker female to go 142 200 free as well so yeah way to go zoe huge huge stuff mm-hmm. and so, it also 
Just want to quick point out, it does, this sets us up, I think, for a really exciting 200 freestyle final. I mean, you got Paige, obviously, 141, and then Chloe led off Texas A&M's relay, 142.8. So it's going to be a good battle between them. And then, uh, you know, there's going to be some of these other girls. Kelly Pash is going to be in there. And I believe Alex Walsh from Virginia is going to be swimming the 200 free individually as well. So that's going to be a really nice battle. Yeah, Paige and Alex could get big points for Virginia. Ellen Nelson as well. Virginia might have three in the top eight if all those girls swim it. So that'll be dangerous. Uh, Also interesting, this is what I meant to say earlier, the last five winners of the 800 free, that team went on to win the team title. Mm. So if history repeats itself, Virginia (laughs) will probably win this meet. But anyway, this is only the first of four days, so I don't want to make any predictions, but that's that's an interesting statistic. So, but yeah, that was a good, good recap of division two action. Very interesting stuff in Birmingham, Alabama, and, uh, some more exciting stuff will be coming from Greensboro, North Carolina for, um, the women's NCAA championships. So Noah, any other final thoughts? Um, no, not that I can think of. I'm, I'm excited to see how, how division two stuff plays out. I, I, you know, I'm praying that the weather gets better for those guys and girls just because, you know, last year ended so abruptly. So I'm just hoping that this year they can, they can have a normal meet and and finish the thing out. But yeah, D one should be exciting. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I'm excited to see, see if Virginia can, can keep the momentum rolling and like their, all their, their projections in the psych sheet look great. And, you know, it looks like they have a great chance to win this meet, but that would be, uh, that'd be pretty impressive. So we'll look forward to that and kind of see how the next few days play out. Yep, absolutely. First time a non-SEC or Pac-12 team has won the 800 free. And uh, so it's Virginia's first national title for the women. And um, man, if they keep on rolling and win win the whole team thing, that would be huge for them. And lastly, I got to ask you, Noah, did you wear green today? Um, I didn't mean to. Like, I literally just put on a sweatshirt. Uh, like 10 minutes ago and it has green on it, but I forgot to wear green during the rest of the day. So I, I got some on now though. <laughs> All right. Well, you got it on just in time to uh, finish St. Patrick's day, right? Wearing your green. And uh, yeah, I'm a big St. Patrick's day fan. I love, I love my Irish heritage. It's uh, kind of fun to, to just, you know, be silly with that. But, um, and I, I got to mention it. <clears throat> I know we mentioned it on our Monday motivation show, but Hats off to Katie Ledecky. Happy birthday to Katie Ledecky. It's her birthday yep. today on St. Patrick's Day. Obviously, her her NC2A career was amazing. She holds uh, the records for the 500 and the mile and the 1,000 and won a lot of stuff for Stanford. So happy birthday, Katie Ledecky. And good luck to all the women at NC2A1 and uh, both men and women at Division Two. And we'll be back each night for the March Madness Ultimate Swimmer NCAA Recap. Until then, keep smiling and keep streamlining. For Noah Yanchulis, I'm Josh Davis. We'll see you around the pool soon. Bye-bye.